we are going to be rebuilding these 3,500 pound Dexter style axles. I got two of them. I got the one that's off the trailer and over here I got one that's still on the trailer and we'll get to that one here a little bit. We're going to work on this one first. So we're going to completely rebuild these. We're going to start off with this piece here on both sides. Take this hub off. Move this grease cap. Take the crown nut off. Pull the, the carter pin. This backing plate is held on by four bolts. We're going to loosen those four bolts and pull this backing plate off. We're going to do that to both sides. We're going to move up here to the springs and we're probably going to cut these U-bolts because to be honest with you, I don't think these nuts are going to come off. Uh, they've been on there for a while, corroded. This replaced the U-bolts, that's what everybody else does. We'll cut these U-bolts with a, with a saw, get rid of those, take these springs off. We'll do that, like I said, on both sides, over there, over here. Once we get this hub off, we're going to check out these threads on these. This ones don't look real bad, but if we have to replace these lugs, or these studs, we're going to replace the studs. We are going to replace the lugs. We'll see about the studs. We'll see how bad they are. See if they're worth saving, or see if we're just going to replace them. We're going to take and sand these down, repaint those black. Once you get the springs off of here, we're going to sand this whole, this whole axle tube down and paint, repaint it black. We're going to get these springs, sand them down, repaint them black, get new bushings in here, replace the bushings. Like I said, put new U-bolts in, probably reuse this thing, we'll repaint it and reuse it. On this backing plate itself, uh, depending on what we get into when we pull this hub off, we might reuse this or we just might order a whole new backing plate and bolt a whole new backing plate on. We are reusing the hub for sure though. Clean off the grease here. Let me give you a little backstory on this trailer and these axles. I bought this trailer off of a guy for $50. I'm going to use it to make a, basically a 20 foot car hauler slash steel hauling trailer. I'm going to put some 6,000 pound axles on. It's got a heavy duty frame on it. And um, this trailer was in a flood and as you can see everything right here is corroded and it's bad uh, a lot worse than I thought it was going to be so this backing plate is going to have to be replaced we're just going to buy the whole backing plate set you can get it on Amazon you can get it on a couple different trailer supply places and we're going to redo that this thing here isn't extremely bad we'll pull that seal out and uh, clean that bearing up we might replace that bearing I don't know yet, but we'll definitely replace the seal and uh, go from there. But you can see the corrosion in here. These bolts here are corroded really bad. The pads are corroded. All the springs are extremely bad. So I'd imagine this thing being underwater. There was a flood that came through about two years ago, and this thing was probably under, I'm going to say, 10 feet of water for probably a week. Once the flood waters receded, it just sat in a guy's field for about two years till I came and picked it up. So all that water being in there did not help anything. And it's pretty bad. So we're going to loosen the four bolts, or try to. Maybe they won't come loose, I don't know. We're going to try to loosen those four bolts and try to get this whole backing plate to come off. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're working on taking this backing plate off. What I'm using is my Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Pro through socket and ratchet set. And that works on the bottom two. My bottom two 
which you can't see, and I don't got no ca camera angle to give you that you can see that because this is basically up against the frame of my trailer here. But I can use that on the bottom too. The problem we run into is this piece here that runs down is preventing this from going on. The head of this is too big to go on. So we're, we resorted to using an 11 16 wrench and then we're using the second wrench to help break them loose. I'm surprised that actually if I put this on here that these are actually they're tough but they are coming off. So the bottom one on that side is well, coming off anyways. Now let's see about this other one. And that one came off real easy. I'm surprised how easy that came off. Oh, there we go. Well, at least the bottom should be broke loose. Let's see about the top too. <clears throat> yeah, that's not budging at all. <clears throat> yeah. That one's on there. to come in guys. Let me see if I can get the other one broke loose. It was the same way. After about 15 minutes struggling with these four bolts, it actually came off without any kind of penetrating oil or heating them up or nothing like that. I got them to come off. It is just them two top ones were really rough with a wrench. End up using a um Helper wrench on there, kind of got it stuck on there, but that's all right. The bottom two came off a lot easier. I was able to use the the through socket and ratchet set. Uh, 11 sixteenths is what size I'm more. So now all we're gonna do is cut these two wires back here, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Now this thing should just slide right off. And there you go. And you can see the corrosion in there. Let's get this way. So we can buy this whole assembly. I already got a uh, place to buy them, so I'm gonna order these things, have four of these things sent in. The next thing we're going to work on is getting these off. And if I was a betting man, I'm going to bet that these nuts are not going to come loose. We'll try it. We'll put a wrench on it. I'll get a breaker bar, get the appropriate size wrench, and we'll see if we can break these loose. But more than likely, we're just going to come out with an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel and just buzz these things off in about 10 seconds. But we'll see what we can do, see if we can get them loose first. Just for the fun of it, we're going to go ahead and I got a breaker bar with an impact 3 quarter inch socket. We're going to see if we can get these things to come loose. I'm a batting man. I'm going to bet no. Let's find out. Used this thing to get them broken loose. I'm really surprised that they came off. I really am. But they did. We got them loose enough to where I went ahead and put a uh, three quarter inch socket on my ratchet. And we're just going to take them off the rest of the way. Like that. And. 
here is the first U bolt. And the second one just fell right here. Here's the second U bolt. Now I, I am going to replace these, but I never thought they would have came off. And this thing just comes off too. I don't know if I can get a new one of these. If I can, I'll replace it, depending on the price. If not, I'll just um, sand it down and repaint it. So that's the back of the U-bolts in that plate. Now, this thing should just lift off here, right? There we go. And there's your springs. 3,500 pound springs. And they're off. And on these springs, we'll just sand these down like we're going to do everything else we're keeping and repaint them black. And we'll put new bushings. I'm pretty sure I can get new bushings for these. We'll put new bushings in. This side is completely done. So we got the hub off. We bought the backing plate that holds the uh, springs or the brakes on. We got it off. We came up to the top. We took the U bolts off, took the springs off. And this side is completely done. Now, the other side, you can see over there, I got to go do that one yet. And I'm going to do that, but I'm just not going to show me recording that because we've already seen it once so once they get the other side off then this axle is stripped down basically as far as I can take it before I can start reassembling it here is my axle and it is completely stripped everything is off here that's all that remains the springs are off on both sides same thing over there and now this axle is ready to be sanded down and painted. We're going to paint the whole tube. We're going to paint all this over here. This, we're not going to paint this at all. This will not get painted. We'll tape this off and we'll start painting from this point the whole way across here back down to this point. And again, this will not get painted at all. Over here are the parts that we took off. We got a brake set up there that's going to get completely replaced. We're going to order a new one of those. Up there, a new one of those. Order four new U bolts. I cut those ones off. I took those ones off. These are the plates that hold U bolts on. We're going to reuse those. And those are the hubs. We're going to reuse those, but we will replace the seals and probably replace the bearings. And there's the bearings, the cap, the castle nut, cutter keys are in there. And lastly, our springs, which we're going to reuse because I'm pretty sure I can get bare, uh, bushings for this. So we'll sand them down, paint them, sand the front side of these down, repaint those. We might change the studs, more than likely we'll change the studs on those, knock them out, and put new studs in. So that's going to do it for rebuilding a 3,500 pound Dexter trailer axle. Part two, we're going to paint the, the tubes, paint the whole axle, and then reassemble everything with new parts or replace parts. If you like videos like this and want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. Go into the comment section. Tell me what you think. Like this video. Share this video. And thanks for watching.